Hello and welcome to another Popper video. I'm Kelly Kais and today we're playing Bogles. This Bogles list is definitely different than your standard. We're playing Slippery Bogle and Slippery Bogle has Hexproof, pretty standard Bogle. We're playing Glade Cover Scout, that is a regular one mana Hexproof. Normally we're playing Silana Ledgewalker as the next creature, but we're playing this silly one called Toadstool Admirer. So Toadstool Admirer says Ward 2 for 3 and a green. You can put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on it, and it costs 1 green mana. So this list comes to us from Medvedev, who actually placed 5th in one of the challenges on Sunday with this version of Bogles. And the idea here is that you have 12 1 drops, so you can slam that on turn 1. You can see that he's got all untapped mana, all forests, and then 2 random planes. But what I don't really understand with the planes mana base here is that we don't have any way to fetch the planes. You're just kind of like hoping to get it. So I guess that's my concern at this point after talking with Hinahara. But we do have Abundant Growth and Utopia Sprawl, so really 10 white sources. And then we've got the Rancor for Trample, Commune with Spirits to find enchantments or lands, Abundant Growth. So you have Commune with Spirits, Abundant Growth and Utopia Sprawl for white sources, sort of. Ethereal Armor, and then Sentinel's Eyes here, I guess this is one-off for Vigilance. And then we've got four All Deck Glitters, four Mask, four Armor, so 12 payoff cards. So 12 one-drops, 12 payoffs, and then Armadillo Cloak and Rancor for the Trample effects. Makes some sense. I'm a little bit concerned about Edict uh, decks. Hopefully just spamming Bogles for one mana will get underneath them. But we also have four Vitality Charm in the sideboard and four Flaring Pain for Fog decks, four Standard Bearer. Uh, Medvedev is very good at <laughs> putting very clean looking decks. So this is just all the same effect, like four of, four of, four of. And then we have three of the Lifelink effect where Spirit Link as a two of and Lifelink as a one of because Spirit Link actually stacks. It says whenever Enchanted Creature deals damage, you gain that much life. You can put it on another creature from like from the opponent and if you have two of these on your creature you actually gain you know gain that life two times because there will be two triggers so i'm definitely interested to see how bogles is going to perform i haven't played bogles very much but um after talking with inahara on pondering popper which you can check out in the description below we discussed the deck and i think there are some interesting decisions to be made plus it'll be a fast league so we're just going to slam a jam. It'll be pretty fun. If you're interested in finding out some sideboard information for the decks that I like to play, which is namely Familiars, Tron, Petal, uh, you know, Poison Storm, and stuff like that, that is on my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash There's also like deck donation and coaching tiers. And then make sure to like and subscribe on this video. Let me know what you thought about the format or the deck or whatever you are interested in talking about, and I will make sure to interact in the comments but you can also check me out on discord or twitter because i'm pretty active there this video is brought to us by cardmarket.com which is the largest seller of magic the gathering cards in europe if you want to make a really sweet uh battle box for yourself definitely check that site out and grab some cards and let's go ahead and get into the matches okay we're in round one and we're on the play which is exactly where we want to be so we have land, but no bogle with the mulligan. Land, scout. Okay, we have double bogle coming with spirits. Guess we can keep this. So it's probably better for us if we just bottom the toadstool admirer and hope to find deck, hope to be paired with a deck that doesn't have edicts. And say done. So we'll land, scout, turn to commune, looking for something to do. We have all the glitters. Play the scout. We just need to be on the board as soon as possible. All right. Uh, potentially edict deck. They're blue, black. Could be fairies or control. We're going to commune. So I think I take the sprawl here and then sprawl on white. Oh, I almost clicked blue. That was a close one. <laughs> I almost threw the entire, entire game. So now from here, we have glitters or mask. Mask is plus two right now and glitters is plus two right now so if we play glitters it plays around spell pierce we have a counter spell okay we'll get in for one our opponent plays the tap land again 
So we're hoping they don't have a second counter spell. We're going to mask and attack for three. So given that they could have an edict, I'm gonna run the bogle out. Now we have four power on the table and we're up for top decking. They're gonna counter spell, oh, spell stutter sprite. I should have not done that, that was a mistake. Big mistake on my part. For some reason I thought that they were just blue black control, not blue black fairies. Although I should have expected fairies here. They're brainstorming. They're going to cast an auger of bolus. So we're looking to rip a payoff spell. Maybe armadillo cloak would be the best here. That would make my thing a 7-7 seven, seven trample with a bunch of extra power on it. All the glitters would be fine. Running growth is okay. So that makes my creature a 5-5. Five, five. And a redraw. I'm going to just swing out. There's no reason for me to play the land and it might... I don't know. I don't know if I should play the land or not. They're at 10. So at this point, we have to start holding things in hand, trying to build up uh, a lot of spells to get through this spell starter sprite on two. They're brainstorming. Oh no, that was a preordain that time. They went top bottom on the preordain. We're looking for a trample effect so that we can get through their chumpers. They go bottom bottom. So they're not holding up a, uh, a counter spell. Fairy Seer enters the battlefield. They go bottom, bottom. They're digging for an edict really hard. Gets in for two. Okay. We're looking for some sort of trample effect. The alarm is fine. So now they have to chump every turn. Send one fairy down. First strike is also quite good because now we can attack into the Thorn of the Black Rose, which has a death, death touch. They're brainstorming. I like that I can just F6 here and let them do their thing. We're going to use like three minutes of clock entire match, I think. Plays another land. I do like those. Uh, those are nice islands. These are cool. I like the art here a lot. 7th edition was a... Uh, I played a lot of 7th edition draft and stuff. They get in for one. Okay. No ninja. Three cards in hand. Um, there's really no reason to mask here. So I'll just F6 and attack. They chump. Okay. Plays a land. Still no edict. Gets in for five. Okay. Give an abundant growth. So let's go ahead and attack with the Glade Cover Scout. No trample here. They block. So what in my sideboard matters? Probably just the Vitality Charms. Play this forest out. They're potentially stranded with uh, removal. Looks like they drew. Okay, they're cycling the suffocating fumes. Brainstorming, looking for a creature to jump with. We win. All right. We made them answer our things and they couldn't. So we want the Vitality Charm. Hmm. Sentinel's Eyes is not that necessary, probably. Gonna trim one Rancor. I don't think Toadstool Admirer is that great here. We could also cut on the ethereal armor. I'm just looking for get a payoff on there and then make it trample. We can kind of expect that. All right, let's get rid of cloak. Maybe then one of these toadstools. I'm kind of trimming across the board here. I'm not really sure what to bring in, but I do know that I want edict protection and I also want trample. So I'm kind of trimming around getting those effects at the same time. Okay, we have Creature Creature, Rancor. I guess I'm keeping this. We have no white mana. All right, kind of risky. I'm playing Aquifer. Let's play Glade Car Scout. Okay, they've got nothing. Play a land. I'm going to attack. There's a possibility that they flash in a sprite to block, and then I Vitality Charm. Ha ha ha. Played it right into my hands. All right. Sprite is dead, and then I can Rancor this. Next turn I can attack for three, plus play two creatures. They lost a Sprite for no reason. So if I attack right now and they flash in a Sprite again, then I can play two creatures and play the Rancor again. So that seems okay. I don't think I want to play the Mask directly into this right now. Okay. Play the land, pass. So you can see here that we're, we're not able to have the white mana at the moment, which is a problem. Got a land. They're gonna play Thorn of the Black Rose. 
Okay. So now they think that they can just block and maintain the monarchy, but not, not do that. We're looking for a land, find a land. So play the Glade Cover Scout. We're gonna Ancestral Mask on this one. Attack. If they want to trade their thorn and give me the monarch, that's fine. So the thorn would trade for the mask. Okay. Sure. It seems fine. We have all the power now. We get our Rancor back. We have another creature. Although not the greatest creature, of course. Get the Rancor. We have the land. So they play a Preordain. They're kind of in need of a way to play a creature here. They don't play a creature. All right. Uh, play a forest. Swing out. See if they uh, flash in a sprite again. No sprite. All right, well, I'm not going to block. I'm not going to do anything. Here's the sprite. So do I find a vitality charm? No. So now the sprite can take back the monarchy. That's their second sprite, so it would be unlikely for them to have another one here. This no white mana is just so bad. Um, attack. Okay, we take the monarch. I'll pass. Or yield until next end step, I mean. Find a mask, okay. So we can catch them tapping low and really get in dirty, I think. Find an edict. Yep. So we need to probably be more diligent about keeping a hand with extra mana. We kept a one lander and drew all lands too, so that's not great. Okay, preordain for the opponent. You go top bottom. Card. Alright, so it's up to you, Toadstool Admirer. Okay, they got me. Um, so we need more creatures, right? Oh, I could just cut one of the glitters. Maybe Armadillo Cloak doesn't even need to be there. Keep the glitters. Or maybe bring in the Rancor again. And then, uh, man, this, the mana situation is quite bad. It's okay. All right, I think I can keep this. We have Vitality Charm for an Edict Effect. We can Commune, we have the Planes. So I guess this is actually a pretty good start. Lots of card selection. It reminds me of uh, Land Preordain Go. All right, your turn. I have a 1-1, one, one, which maybe they took out their targeted removal, maybe not. Let's commune. I'm going to take this all the glitters, play a land, and attack them. And this allows me to play Vitality Charm if they Edict this turn, and then play mask or glitters but I'll just be glitters I guess hmm maybe mask is the right thing to be cutting so let's see if they have a counter spell the counter so should I play the commune or the vitality charm tough tough decision I still feel like I have to leave it open walker of bolus okay so let's vitality charm now I guess fun and growth so Abundant Growth is going to let me play the Mask and turn into a 3-3, which can attack through the Augur Volus. Or I can commune looking for an Ethereal Armor or another creature. Just Mask here and swing. Don't like that it has Ward 2 <laughs> and it's going to get easily killed here. They have 4 mana. Are they going to play the Monarch? They play the Monarch. All right. So we can sprawl on white, play commune, looking for a first strike, find ancestral mask. The ancestral on this insect, playing into the whole like them having um, a removal spell thing, I will attack you. Like how bad do they want to hold on to the monarchy? They're holding on to the monarchy. We still have our toadstool person that's not that great can get easily killed. They got the edict. All right. Uh, hmm. I think we're going to have to go to the next game. Okay, round two. We're zero and one, but that's okay. We have the Bogles. We have a payoff. We're missing white mana, but we can maybe find it with the commune. They go Ancient Den, Novice Inspector. Find Ethereal Armor. So I'm going to lean on Bogle. So next turn, I'm going to commune looking for a planes, hoping for a planes. If I don't find a planes, then I'm looking for a um, growth spire, no, a utopia sprawl or an abundant growth. Find another bogle. Let's commune. Find the planes. Land, ethereal armor, attack. So now we can go 
Bogle all the glitters. And then we have two giant creatures. Synthesizer for the opponent. Rustville Bridge. So they can't really deal with me in game one, but they could potentially race me. They're clearly going to attack. Makes sense. We have another Ethereal Armor. Play Bogle. Might as well Glitters here. Send five. See when they want to start blocking. Okay, they're going to block now. So this next turn we go Ethereal Armor on the second Bogle. We're tapping mana for a Glinhawk. They're going to pick up the Synthesizer. Okay, they find a uh, land they cannot use. And they had played the Great Furnace before playing out the Glinhawk, which was maybe a mistake. Is Skyfisher back the Wedding Invitation or the Novice Inspector? It's going to be the Wedding Invitation here. And gets in for one. Yep. But well, Ethereal Armor. Maybe that was that was probably a mistake. Oh no, I can still play this Toadstool. Attack for 11. Next turn I can Mask on the Toadstool Admirer. They would have to have three mana open and be able to kill it with a bolt or something. They blast us. We're at seven. Or 13. Plays all the glitters. Are we dead? 9, 10, 11. They find a all the glitters. We have a land. Ginger Brute. They swing out. 11, 12, 13. So we just die here. <laughs> all the glitters getting wrecked. Ah, oh, geez. Okay, um, I think we want the lifelink stuff. Sentinel's Eyes seems terrible. To be honest, I don't think, with the mana that we have, it's not very good. Let's get rid of these glitters. Admit. I don't know, we can't afford to put Standard Bearer in the deck either. I should have just brought in a couple of, uh, what's his faces? Ash Barons is. So we need to be more discerning with our mulligans. I think this is a keep. So we'll go land sprawl on green. And then we're looking to find a way to make the bogle gigantic so that it doesn't die to a main phase and the festivities. Um, that's a play pattern that Hinahara talked about. We have a land into Kroar Clan Shaman. Okay. Let's commune. So it's the abundant growth or the mask here. I guess we take the mask, play bogle, and then play land. I guess if we had gotten the Bogle out earlier, we could have forced them to crack their lands. There's a Thraben Inspector. Sure. So I'm just gonna play the Armadillo. All right, block. Your creature's dead. Now I have the chance to make a big creature. So let's go Commune. I'm taking the Abundant Growth. Abundant Growth on the Plains. They land. Play a so now I can pass. The next turn I can go Bogle Mask, and then after that, Armadillo Cloak Rancor, and then seal the deal, assuming they don't have enchantment removal. You have a Ginger Brute. Land. I think attacking with the Quark Clan Shaman was really greedy. They just probably didn't assume from, that I was going to do anything with that. For the Bogle, play the Mask. Now oh, it's big. A Synthesizer looking for something to do. Novice Inspector as well. Okay, finds a Novice Inspector. Play the Novice Inspector and attack with the Ginger Brute. I don't understand. I'll block the Ginger Brute. On Ringer Cleric. Oh, that was smart. It was a smart play. Didn't make it, I didn't see that one coming. Okay, I got sort of lucky, I guess, here. Drawing another creature with Cloak. I have not played very much Bogles. I've, I've walked right into that one for sure. They find a Lembus. We're about to have super duper lifelink, though. Plays the Lembus. Don't think they can end step cleric me this turn. All right. Uh, okay. We're looking for a payoff now. Rank over here. Cloak it. And attack for seven. One, two, three, four, five. I even want to do that. I guess they they could throw all their creatures in front and then my thing would die. That stinks. Linha comes down. They're gonna pick up the Lembus. Then they can Lembus again. Oh man. This is getting away. We're getting we're running away with it. They're running away with it. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Kill my armadillo cloak. So we're looking for a payoff. Okay, mask is a payoff. Now I can attack, I think. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Alright, cool. Send. We gain 13. We go to 30. 
We did remove two payoffs from the deck, so we only have eight more. They play Olympus. They're trying probably to find another cleric or to play a Core Sky Fisher, pick up the cleric, play the cleric. No! There's the Core Sky Fisher cleric, pick up the cleric. That's not what I was looking for. Cleric kills the mask. Okay. So now we're back to having a 5 3. At least it has trample. And we had 30 life. We got completely creamed by their, uh, all the glitters on the previous one. Play my land. I'm gonna pass. They have a Glenhawk to pick up the Lembus. When it plays the Lembus, I go bottom. Find all the glitters of their own. So they have an 11 power creature now. Vigilance 11 power creature. I need a glitters of my own. I need another mask or something. <laughs> Find a lifelink. Doesn't do that much. The Rancor. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So, because my creature has lifelink, if they attack out, we can survive. But if they don't attack out, then we probably die. If they can attack, 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 and then we're probably dead next turn. But lifelink is like an effect that happens immediately. It's not triggered, so we would gain the 7 immediately. And then gain a 7 again, gaining 14 total. Play a Windscarred Crag going up to 8. They swing out. I'm clearly going to block the Cleric. We gain 7 life. They just have double bolt. All right, fair. They found a line. Draw oh, cards. Man. Well, let's go to round three. Okay, I'm going to try to be pretty specific with my keeps here. So we have ethereal armor as our payoff. Two ways to get white mana. I'm, I'm going to keep it. We're going to look at the top bunch of cards. We'll be fine, right? <laughs> and we're up against a tithing blade deck. Big problem right here. For sure. Oh man. Well, we find. Guess I'm just gonna run out the Toadstool Admirer. They can't just kill it other than with an edict. And if they're gonna edict us 700 times anyway, like what are we gonna do? Nothing. Just get edict. Um, scout. Ethereal armor on the scout. Maybe that was like not the right play because that was losing on a mana or losing on one damage. We'll find out if that matters later. So I kind of want to commune looking for another creature because they probably have a Tithing Blade here. All of our creatures are one drop, so we could commune and play another one drop as well as play... We can't play the Rancor. We could commune into a Ethereal Armor maybe. They do nothing. Find another creature. Let's commune. I'll take this enchantment. Land. Play Sentinel's Eyes here. So I like that the Sentinel's Eyes can come back. I kind of feel like they're going to Fumes, Untap, and uh, Tithing Blade me. They take eight. It's a pretty big turn three for, for sure. Okay, there's the Fumes. They take six. Tithing Blade. Really brutal. <laughs> oh my god. Rancor comes back at least. A Novice Inspector. Sentinel's Eyes, we can... Ah, uh, and they have a Bachuca Pog. <laughs> Absolutely trashed. Okay, <laughs> take the forest. Scout. Rancor scoop. So we cleared some lands and some bogles. I'm going to concede. Absolutely <laughs> wrecked. All right, we want all the vitality charms, obviously. And then I think I'm just going to get rid of the trample stuff. And then I don't think the sentinel's eyes is that good. So payoffs. We want all the payoffs. Holy moly. Tithing Blade. That's why nobody's playing this deck right now. Okay, we're on the play. We have Toadstool Admirer. We have Vitality Charm and Abundant Growth and all the glitters. Okay, keep. We have Creature, Backup Creature, and Glitters. They mulligan to five. So they're probably mulliganing to a Tithing Blade, which we can get around. My 1-1 one -one is coming in hot. Land, Toadstool, go. It's an oof. I guess every play has been an oof, so we don't need a creature to be an oof. They play a Thraben Inspector. Okay, we can't attack into that because we need to save these for having creatures. Um, let's Abundant Growth first. Just a draw. Okay, draw a Forest. I think I will end step the Vitality Charm. Yeah, then I can play both my things. 
Let's see if they attack. Do you want to attack? No, okay. Create an insect. Land. Rancor this. Splitters. Send. They play Tithing Blade, getting rid of my insect. Plays an Obscura Storefront. So next turn they could cast down my creature. It's not a beast, so we can't regenerate it. We're gonna go white, glitters, and attack. Okay, they're gonna save some damage. Go to six. A course guy fisher picking up the tithing blade, feeling very confident at the moment. Little do they know. We have an instant speed insect. Sack the insect. We got him. We win a game. All right, let's make our thing even bigger. An attack for 18. All right, finally. <laughs> I mean, we won the first game, right? But let's do it again. Payoffs and 1-1s. One okay, we don't have a payoff, but we can regenerate our Slippery Bogle. So let's keep this. Play Scoured Barons. Okay, so we have Land Bogle. We do have the white mana as well. So all you have to do is draw a payoff. And there's a payoff. So let's sprawl on white and pass the turn. This next turn, we're going to play the bogle and hold up Vitality Charm. A novice inspector. Obscure storefront finding a plains, most likely. They could also get a swamp for snuff outs, but they have. No, they find a plains. So we'll play the bogle and pass the turn. They're going for the tithing blade. Hmm. Okay. They get my mask off of duress. That's very sad. Very, very sad. All right. Make an insect and sack the insect. They could just pick up their creature again. I need a payoff again. They have three cards in hand. Likely one of them is a creature. Play the forest that they know about and pass the turn. They play a Lembus, so they don't have a creature to pick up the Tithing Blade. They obscure a storefront, they're going to grab another land. There's another Thraven Inspector, and they're going to pass a turn. So we need some way to like actually get card advantage. Wow. They're hammered. <sighs> hmm. They're going to make an insect in response to the Vitality Charm. I mean, to the Tithing Blade. They play a Lembus. I, I nearly scooped. Thought it was gonna be a core sky fisher right there. So many novice inspectors. Everyone is currently top decking. Immune with spirits. Finds an ethereal armor. And we can attack for three. Finally doing something. They would have to really uh, fall apart here. They draw a card. They're attacking for one. Could have a fumes maybe and kill my creature. Novice inspector, okay, that also works. Although my creature has first strike. All right, mask. Back for eight. They block. I'm gonna crack the clue. A deadly dispute and inspector. So we're likely gonna die here. They drew a bunch of cards. Um, and now they're probably gonna be able to pick up and play the Tithing Blade. Man, I just don't think that you can play without main deck edict protection. All right, let's go to round four. Okay, we're in round four. We have. One more round. We win this, then we have another chance to get our 50 play points back. I think we have to probably see how all the rounds go just to see about this deck, but I don't know about this one. Uh, you'd have to really not face any Tithing Blades whatsoever or Dawnbreaker Clerics. Like, where, where is Bogles in this metagame right now? I know it's coming back, but it just feels... Ugh. So we're going to do our best. Okay, I think this is a keep. We have... Creature and a ton of payoffs, plus white mana. It's a little bit slow. Azorius Guildgate, so this is a Cogate deck. You have to watch out for Spell Pierce. So Sprawl on white. Pass the turn. They're probably like, oh, they didn't name red, thank god. They don't want to face pawns over there. Of course, we do have to get the Scout down underneath the Counterspell, which they now are holding up. Nope. They play a thing. Plays a Modern Age, so I'm hoping to find a land. Scout go. Now they could play a bunch of uh, Dominator Clerics as well. They're going to draw and discard. Discards an island, plays a land. So let's lead on this Rancor. They're going to go with Counterspell. Now we can play the land and Glitters. Attack for three. 
Depending what we draw, we could play three drop plus Rancor. Okay, they have gates. They use their one counter spell already. The Dawnmare and Cleric now. Okay. Three cards in hand. Let's try this commune. Find a payoff, so let's play the glitters. They likely have a counter spell. Okay. We can't do anything right now. They have two cards in hand. They can gate their creature. That's what they're gonna do. So now I'm hoping they don't have Spell Pierce, but it seems like the way they were using the counter spells heavily that they don't have Spell Pierce. They attack for a bunch. We're looking to go um, Armadillo Cloak, most likely. Play this Ethereal Armor, actually, since it's a payoff spell. Play the Rancor. Play a Glade Cover Scout. Send six. Next turn, I'm going to Cloak. All right, you're at 11. They have double gate. So they can deal me 12 damage right now. And then next turn is 12 again. We have a forest. Cloak this. 9, 10, 11. So we don't win. Maybe if I masked, we would have won. It would have been 2, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So they would have gone to 10. Yikes! Damon wrecked us with the nice draw there. Very nice draw. Um, standard bear is pretty good because they can't... Um, we need to bring in standard bear for their standard bear, but it also doesn't really allow them to use their gates. Cut the sentinel's eyes. It seems cruddy. I'm going to cut two glitters again. Cut one of my bad creatures. Submit. This is a very tough deck. It's either hard to play or I'm not doing a good job. <laughs> like what what could I have done better? What are these mulligans, man? Okay, we're on the play. Playing against Caw Gates. Um, let's keep. We have land scout, commune for land, play abundant growth. Get on the table fast and then start jamming. And play Glade Cover Scout, your turn. I just want to attack you. <laughs> Don't think about it. Just let me attack you. Okay, commune for a land, find a forest, play the forest, play abundant growth, attack. So now we have armor rancor. Let's see if they play a two drop. We probably want to commune for a land again. We have a lot going on. They're preordaining. Likely to play a tap land here. They play a tap land. We have double payoff. If we find a land, we don't have to pre do anything. So we can just play our most expensive spell. And next turn we have multiple things we can do. Get in for three, they go to 16. Seagate on red, I guess to Pyroblast. Kind of weird. We play a Modern Age. So now we have Rancor, Rancor, Ethereal Armor. Is that enough to kill them? Plus four, plus four, plus three, four, five, six, seven. I think it's enough. I think they're dead. So it feels good. Oh, Breath Weapon off the red. Okay, I have to be aware of that. Scary. Um, Rancor. Rancor again. Uh, ethereal Armor. Resolves. <laughs> Attack for 20. Yeah. We win. <laughs> okay. That's the way it's supposed to go. Um, We could maybe bring in Vitality Charm. A little bit nervous about that. Uh, Get rid of this cloak. Then bring in, go up on payoff spells. Put one of these. I don't know, I'm all over the place here. Maybe Medvedev will watch and tell me what I did wrong. Uh, the thing that is the problem here is that we have no creature. So we have to mulligan. Again. Okay, this is a good hand. Let's keep. Put back the forest. Play a tap land. We can ethereal armor on turn two. Let's play a bogle. We have land creature payoff. Hmm. I will try it for this abundant growth here. I'm expecting a counter spell. The worst would be spell pierce, I guess, but they wouldn't likely have two spell pierces. Okay. Let's attack for one. They cycle a Lorien revealed. Grabbing an island. So they have like no gates at all. Reordain. There's an island. Holding up counter spell. I guess I'm going to play another creature to start clocking them and attack you. Looks like I really should have put the abundant growth on the planes. 
Somehow I've drawn two planes. Couldn't draw planes to save my life earlier, and now I draw all of them. So we need to find a situation where we can put both of our payoffs onto the table. Uh, protection from monocolored, huh? Do do do. -do. Well, I have a multicolored creature. Attack. <laughs> well, let's see if they want to gate their creature up. Seems unlikely with only one power that it'll give. A preordaining. Plays a Seagate. Pump that creature. No, they're holding up Counterspell. Darn. Let's go Rancor. If they want a Counterspell. This is on white. I feel like I should put another Scout in play. I can attack for seven. Maybe they're trying to get up to the point where they can... Matic Strands. All right, that makes sense. I forgot that I would potentially need to fight through Prismatic Strands. Just keep presenting lethal and they have to keep having strands in hand though. Have a squadron hawk. Okay. Feel some hawks. Do another rancor. Might as well attack again. I know they only have three power, so they can't do anything to my creature. They're gonna block in strands. They're gonna blow up my enchantment. Okay. We get the rancor back. Play a rancor. Play a bogle. Destroy evil, reckon me there. Now they could counterspell here, I'm giving them the opportunity to, but maybe they're worried about an all that glitters. They're casting a brainstorm. So they get the full value out of the brainstorm squadron hawk. Yep. They get to pull three hawks out, or just two hawks, it looks like, going up to seven cards in hand. Plays a sacred cat. Now they can use the sacred cat to gain a lot of life. We're going to sprawl on green because we drew a sprawl. And make a Rancor on this one. That way we can block the cat. Although they can Prismatic Strands. They can make the cat a 4-4. I will block. The cat's going to die. They gain 4 life. I get my Rancors back. Put the Rancors on the other scout probably. To bring the cat back. Holding up Counterspell still. Uh, Rancor. Rancor again. On their turn. Self Strands in the Graveyard. Plays the Citadel Gate. They gate their Squadron Hawk so they can attack for five. So they're trying to clock me now and actually win the game. I need to pay off so that I can put it on the Slippery Bogle and start attacking. They only have one counter spell available at the moment. They have another Sacred Cat. All right, they got me. I'm out of here. Cloak, Glitters. I mean, we were not going to win in time. Let's try. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to close it. Let's try one more for posterity. <clears throat> okay, round five. I haven't been updating, but we are zero and four. But that's okay. <laughs> uh, let's keep this hand. We have land sprawl on white, and then turn two scout sentinel's eyes, turn three glitters. If we draw uh, land, we can go turn two bogle glitters. Don't know what Ed Elric is on. All right, they're on apparently Goblin Combo. Bogle, Sentinel's Eyes, pass the turn. Okay, not, they're not a Goblin Combo. They appear to be Mono Red, which hopefully our Armadillo Cloak can win. But it has to do with like whether or not we can make our creature big enough. And we have a ginormous creature, but I don't know if we can actually like draw the second land and get the Armadillo Cloak on it. Okay, Mono Red... We might finally win a match. Bring in our spirit links and that's it. They scoop it up. All right. <laughs> we waited for it. We got there in the end. So we want the spirit links and the life link. We can maybe get rid of the sentinel's eyes. Although the, let's cut some number of mask and the sentinel's eyes. I mean, it's good and all not to have to tap to block, to attack. So that we can just stay on defense and offense at the same time, but I think that we want to just mm, be lean. Sentinel's eyes is like generally bad. It's only a one of, so we want three of those effect. We have no creature. We mulligan. No creature again. We have a creature. Okay, let's keep this. Put back this land and this land. We'll go land, sprawl on green. Turn to Sprawl on white, or we can just put back this Sprawl. All right, that's probably where I'm going to be. I'm going to put back the second Sprawl, and then I can Sprawl here, 
I'm looking to have four mana in a turn so I can play Admirer plus Cloak. We don't want to get blown out by um, a... Oh, no, I did it. Oh, God. I was saying I didn't want to get blown out by an End of Festivities and I just jam my creature anyway. I tried to click the Sprawl on this and we're going to get End of Festivities and we're just going to con concede. <laughs> Jeez. Okay, they're on Boros. Uh, maybe a little bit worse for us. Let's split these. Submit. Okay, keep this one. We're going to Sprawl on Green. Turn to Commune into Sprawl. Sprawl on Green. And that's going to give me enough mana to play Commune into Sprawl. If I draw land, I can Toadstool plus Glitters. Commune. Finding a Forest. Or I can just take the Armadillo Cloak. Or the Ethereal Armor. Take the Cloak. No, I, I still want to be on my plan, right? Take the Cloak. I don't... I'm having trouble deciding here. <laughs> White. So this next turn is going to be Toadstool, Admirer, all the glitters. Play a Bushwhacker to attack for two. That's uh, not very strong. So let's play... I mean, it doesn't really matter, right? Play this creature and glitters. War two means that they're barely going to be able to kill it. I guess we have to not get got by them having um, Dawnbringer Cleric after beating in. Oh, you also have an all the glitters. I see. I see. Fair enough. That makes more sense now. But do you have a lifelink? I don't think you do. We're just two ships passing. <laughs> Take seven. I'll go to 20. They lightning bolt me. Okay, I'll go to 17. Fine. Fine. Another glitters for the opponent, it looks like. They can attack for 11. 13. 14. 15. <sighs> <laughs> This is insane. What a turn of events. They do nothing? Okay. Go land. Let's abundant grow at this. We have an 8-8. I'll play the Glade Cover Scout. Pass the turn. They play End of Festivities. They have 17 damage. Okay. <laughs> that was the worst league I have ever played. I apologize. Hopefully it was entertaining. We got a big zero, zero, <laughs> zero, five. Oh man, I'm not playing that Bogles deck again anytime soon. <laughs> I'll go back to my blue stuff. We'll see you in the next video.